Good morning, I am Dr. K. Ashok Kumar, Assistant Professor, Department of Basic Science and Humanities, uh, BVRIT Narsapur. And today I will be dealing with uh, one of the topic in the course name that is Applied Physics. And topic name it is Fundamentals of Quantum Physics. So it is one of the topic in the Applied Physics. The first and foremost topic in this so it is the wave particle duality of variation. So that is the introduction regarding the this the quantum physics, fundamentals of quantum physics. And here what is the wave and particle duality of variation? So here we will be discussing that. So what exactly the duality of variation? So particle is if particle is there, it is specified by mass, velocity, then momentum and energy. So all these parameters will be giving the, the particle nature and from this particle nature, so we cannot say where exactly the particle will be existing. So it cannot be said to be located just here or there. Coming to the wave nature, so a wave is nothing but rather a spread out disturbance. So whatever the the volume or the space available, so it will be spreading out, and it is said to be called a wave. That is, a wave is specified by the so amplitude, wavelength, frequency, the phase, wave velocity, intensity, and all these parameters can be taken for a wave. So, radiation includes visible light, infrared, UV rays, X-rays, all these will be coming under radiation. So, these will be behaving as waves in experiments. So, based on the interference, diffraction, etc. This is due to the fact that these phenomena requires the, the presence of two waves at the same position. So, obviously, it is difficult to for these two particles to occupy the same position at the same time. Thus we conclude the radiation how behaves like the wave nature. And Planck's quantum theory was successfully explained the black body radiation. And photoelectric effect, Compton effect where radiation interacts with the matter in the form of photons or quanta. Thus we can conclude that radiation it behaves like the particle. So based on the quantum theory, so we can successfully explain the black body radiation, photoelectric effect, Compton effect and where this radiation interacts with the in the form of photons or these photons we can say it is said to be called quanta. So here we can conclude that radiation behaves like the particle. Thus sometimes radiation behaves as a wave and sometimes as a particle. That is, it has particle as well as wave nature. So it is said to be called the wave particle dualism. So it should be remembered that the radiation cannot be exhibit particle and wave properties simultaneously. So, this is the wave particle duality of radiation. And coming to the so matter waves, that is de Broglie concept of matter waves. So, similar to the radiation, the matter will be having the duality. So, duality in the sense, they will be having the wave nature as well as particle nature. So, the same thing that we are explaining. Under the heading, it is de Broglie's concept of matter waves. And here we are taking the two equations. So, one it is from the quantum theory of radiation. It is given by E equivalent to H nu. Or we can write as E equivalent to H c by lambda. 
where mu is equal to c by lambda. So it is based on the, the Planck's quantum theory. And the second equation it is from Einstein mass energy relation. So which will be giving the E equal to mc square, where m is the mass and c is the velocity. So these are the two equations that we can take for the, the matter waves. That is Planck's quantum theory and second one it is Einstein mass energy relation. And from these two equations, so we are equating mc square equal to hc by lambda and implies we can get that so lambda equal to h by mc. So the same thing that we are writing. So in place of the c value, so we are writing as that is the particle will be having the velocity less than the velocity of light. So we are replacing this the c value. So we are replacing this c value with respect to v. And the same that we are modifying lambda equal to h by mv. So where mv equal to p, p is said to be called the moment. So from this equation 1, so we can say where m is the mass of the particle and v is the velocity and p is the moment. So from this equation, so we are getting that it is said to be called de Broglie equation, de Broglie wave equation. And so if you are considering a particle, then we know that there will be a kinetic energy will be there that we are indicating as E and E equal to half mv square. So we know the kinetic energy is half mv square or if we are simplifying like this, then here we will be getting that P equal to that is momentum. So we can write as so under root 2me, the same P value that we are substituting in the equation 1. So here you can substitute and we will be getting the a de Broglie equation, modified de Broglie equation. So based on the, the moment, that is we are considering the energy, kinetic energy for the material particle. And at last, so if you are substituting here, then we will be getting the, in this equation, we are substituting the p value. So p is equal to, that is under root 2me. So we are getting the modified equation. So, which that we can indicate lambda equal to h by under root 2me. So, this is the de Broglie equation. If you are considering the energy of the particle, kinetic energy of the particle. Similarly, so if you are considering the particle will be consisting of potential energy. That is, if the particle is accelerated between the potential difference the V, then we are modifying the equation as, that is equation 1, so we are modifying that we will be getting lambda equal to H by under root 2MEV. So these are the two modified equations for this, the equation 1, when we are considering the energy, the kinetic energy of the electron and when we are considering the, the potential difference, when the electron is, the particle it is moving under the potential difference, then we are modifying and we are getting the wave equation. So, lambda equal to h by under root 2me. So, when the particle of, it is in the thermal equilibrium that is based on the kinetic theory of gases. So, we are saying that, so the electron of the particle, so it will be under the temperature. Then we are modifying the equation, the kinetic energy E equal to, that is 3 by 2 into kT. So where k is said to be called Boltzmann's constant and T is said to be called the absolute temperature. So the same equation, the E that we are substituting in the equation, 
in this equation here and we are getting the resultant equation here so lambda equivalent to so which is equivalent to h by under root 3m into kt so this is the another form of de broglie equation that is if we are considering only the the kinetic energy then we will be taking the lambda equivalent to h by under root 2mb so if you are considering based on the kinetic theory of gases that is if the temperature is constant then we are modifying the equation so lambda equivalent to h by under root the 2 3m into kt so this is the equation and if you are considering that the particle then which is consisting of potential difference or potential energy when it is moving between the potential difference v then we are considering lambda equivalent to h by under root 2m so these are said to be called three the modified de broglie equations so de broglie wavelength associated with the electron that is if you are considering an electron and that is a particle and what is the de broglie wave equation for this electron so here we are considering the kinetic energy and we are considering the potential energy when the electron is emitting from the cathode then initially it will be having the potential energy and after releasing from the cathode so it will be possessing the kinetic energy so that is energy will be converting into that is potential energy initially so which will be converting into the kinetic energy so based on the law of conservation of energy so we are saying the the total energy before emission which is equal to total energy after emission so here we are taking as yes, uh, we are equating the potential energy with respect to the, the kinetic energy and we are substituting the kinetic energy equation so which is equal to the h that is half mv square that we can see here and potential energy that is the when the electron is moving between the poles then which is equal to e into so we are equating the kinetic energy and as well as potential energy just modifying here rearranging here and we are getting the equation the velocity of the electron v equal to under root 2 ev by m so here you can see that this v is said to be called the potential difference it is said to be called the the potential difference in which the electron is moving now this equation so that we are substituting in our the, the de broglie equation lambda equal to h by mv in place of this v we are substituting the this equation that is velocity of the electron it is under root of 2 ev by m and we are simplifying and we are getting the lambda equal to h by under root 2 ev m and we are substituting the h value so where h is said to be called planck's constant and e is said to be called that is the electron charge and the m is the mass of the electron so if you are substituting all these values then the resultant equation so it will be we are getting lambda equal to 12.26 by under root v so this is the modified equation for a given electron beam that is we are considering the electron and we are applying the de broglie equation considering that when it is emitted so it will be possessing the kinetic energy and before emitting then it is possessing the kind the potential energy that we are equating here and substituting in the de broglie equation and this is the modified equation the de broglie modified equation for the given electron so this is we are saying the this is said to be called the de broglie the equation de broglie wave equation so similar to the radiation the electron will be possessing the duality particle nature as well as wave nature coming to the the properties of matter waves so what actually the matter waves are so we are considering the particle so we are considering the electron and this electron 
initially it is an particle and if we are giving the potential energy and kinetic energy then we can say it will be possessing the kinetic energy and potential energy will be giving the the wave nature that is we are saying that these electrons the electrons will be having the wave nature also that we are indicating as the matter waves and here based on the de broglie equation so we are defining the properties of this matter waves and here we are taking the equation that is lambda equivalent to h by mv so where h is the planck's constant and p equivalent to mv so this p equivalent to mv where p is said to be called the moment so this equation is said to be called de broglie wave equation now based on this equation so we are having the properties of this properties of the matter waves the first thing the first particle that is first property so it is lighter is the particle greater is the wavelength lighter is the particle greater is the wavelength associated with it so here in this equation you can see the m m is in the denominator so if the m value is less then lambda value will be very high the same thing that we are writing so lighter is the particle that is if the mass is very less then we can say the wavelength will be very high so this is the first property of this the matter now smaller is the velocity the same equation that we are considering here so this is the equation we are taking that is lambda equivalent to h by mv so here we are considering the v value so that is v is nothing but the velocity of the particle the wave matter then we can say if the smaller is the velocity if the velocity is small then we can say that as it is in denominator so the wavelength will be greater the same thing that we are writing here as the second property smaller is the velocity of the particle greater is the wavelength associated with it now from the same equation so we are considering the from the same equation so we are considering that lambda equivalent to h by mv so when v equivalent to 0 so if you are substituting in this equation that is when v lambda equivalent to h by m into 0 that is we can say which will be equal into the infinite so which is nothing but we are saying this set to be called indeterminate and similarly if we are substituting in place of this velocity as infinity that is lambda equal into h by m into infinity then as anything by infinity so which will be giving the zero the same thing that we are writing here when the velocity is zero so velocity is infinity then wavelength is zero similarly here when the velocity of the particle is zero then wavelength is infinity that is indeterminate this shows that matter waves are generated by the motion of the particles so this facts that matter waves are not they are not the electromagnetic waves so this is the third property of this matter waves so based on the equation lambda equivalent to h by mv so we are taking the how the the particle will be behaving and that is when the velocity is zero then what is the wavelength we are getting and when velocity is infinity then what will be the wavelength now this fourth property we can see here velocity of the matter waves is greater than the velocity of the this light and how we can say that it is the matter waves will be having the greater than the velocity of light so that we will be having an equation below that we will be solving that is a particle in motion is associated with the wave nature that is it will be possessing the two different velocities so one it is referring to the mechanical motion that is we are representing by v and the other one so it is relating to the propagation of the wave that we are indicating by using the omega and here we know based on the that is planck's quantum theory e equal to h by m and we know that based on the einstein mass energy relation 
e equal to mc square. So from these two equations, so we can write the frequency mu equal to mc square by h. Now we know that is wave velocity omega equal to that is frequency into lambda. So frequency from this equation we are substituting here and lambda we know the de Broglie equation lambda equal to h by mv. After substituting these two equations, so we are simplifying and the wave velocity. So we can conclude the omega equal to c by c square by v. So where c is said to be called the velocity of light and v is the velocity of the particle. So velocity of this the electron or any other particle. So from this we can say the wave velocity it will be greater than the velocity of the light wave. So the fifth property of this matter waves that we can say that this wave velocity will be always greater than the velocity of the light wave. So this is the possibility for this matter waves. So this here we can see that I repeat once again that is matter waves. These matter waves will be having the wave velocity. This wave velocity it will be greater than the velocity of light. And as the particle velocity cannot exceed the velocity of light. Coming to the, the next property that is properties of matter waves. These the, map, the wave and particle aspects of moving bodies can never appear together in the same experiment. So these two will not be existing at the same time. And the wave nature of matter introduces an uncertainty in the location of position of the particle. Because the wave cannot be set exactly at this point or exactly at the other point. So we can say that it is said to be called uncertainty. It is said to be called uncertainty in locating the position of the particle. So these are the, the properties of matter waves. So we will be again repeating these properties. So one by one, once again, the properties of matter waves. So here we are considering the, that is based on the de Broglie equation. So we are having lambda equal to h by m where h is the Planck's constant, m is the velocity, m is the mass of the particle, v is the velocity. From this, we are saying the different properties here. Lighter is the particle, greater is the wavelength. And second property, smaller is the velocity, greater is the wavelength. Then third one, so when v is zero, velocity of the particle is zero then wavelength will be infinity, that is indeterminate. And when V is infinity, then wavelength will be zero. So from this we can say, so as it is the V is zero, velocity will be, in, it is indeterminate. That is, when it is at rest position, so the particle will be possessing the wave nature. Similarly, if the velocity is some value, so other than zero, then we can say the wavelength is zero. That is, the electron will be possessing the particle nature. So this is one of the property. Then, so velocity of matter waves is greater than the velocity of the light. And here, the fifth point, a particular motion is associated with the matter waves with two different velocities. So, when it is due to the mechanical motion of the particle, so that we are representing by V and the other we are representing by the, that is W. So, it is due to the propagation of the wave. So, from this equation, that is the Planck's equation E equal to H nu and E equal to mc square. So, from this we have calculated the, that is omega, omega is nothing but the wave velocity. 
So here we are substituting the new frequency and lambda based on the de Broglie equation. So from this, if we are substituting, then we can conclude that the wave velocity will be always velocity of the light. Wave velocity will be always greater than the wave velo the velocity of the light. The next one property it is the wave and particle aspects of a moving bodies can never appear together. And here the last point, last property of matter waves, the wave nature of the part matter introduces an uncertainty. So uncertainty means in the location of the position of the particle. That is we cannot exactly say that it is present at this point or exactly at other point. So these are the properties of matter waves based on the de Broglie concept. And here we are saying the electron, it will be possessing the duality, that is electron will be possessing matter waves or we can say it is consisting of the matter waves as well as particle nature. So that is we can say it is called duality. So which we can demonstrate experimentally. So here one of the experiment it is there, Davison and Germer experiment that we are indicating as Davison and Germer's electron diffraction experiment. So this was experiment, the first experimental evidence of matter waves was given by Davison and Germer. These are the new, two names of the scientists in the year 1927. And they succeeded, they also succeeded in measuring the de Broglie wavelength associated with the, the slow moving electrons. This is the slow moving electrons. And the experimental arrangement for this de Davison and Germer experiment that we are seeing. So, this is the experimental arrangement. Here we can see that there is an the cathode ray emitting. So you can see that there is a filament here. So this F is said to be called filament. This is a tungsten filament. And so here you can observe that there is a that is a slit will be there. So these slits from these slits we are emitting the light beam, sorry, cathode rays. And from as it is passing through this one, so it will be getting the narrow. So this will be passing through the a top edge. And this slit will be at the positive potential. They will be at the positive potential. And it will be acting as an anode. So in the construction, you can see here that is. Once again, I am repeating. So here there is a tungsten filament that we are indicating as F, which is at the negative potential, and G is the the slit, double slit. We can say so as it is passing, as the electron beam is passing, so it will be get narrow. So as we can say it is narrow, and it will be incident down to the a crystal. So this is the crystal we can see. So here you can see that crystal here and as the electron beam is incident, so there is a diffraction will be there. So electron can diffract and here, so there is an, the circular scale is there. So C is said to be called, that is circular scale. So this is a circular scale and which will be in terms of the degrees and over this circular scale, so we are having a, that is a collector. So this is said to be called a collector. So collector is consisting of double wall enclosure. It is consisting of the double wall enclosure. So that only the electrons which are at the negative potential, they will be they will be entering into this collector. 
so this collector will be allowing only the the fast moving electrons so fast moving electrons means the cathode ray the electrons which are coming from the cathode tungsten filament so it will be instant onto the crystal and this crystal will be as it is instant the electron beam will be diffracted and what is the amount of diffraction angle that can be measured by this circular scale and so what is the number of electrons entering into the cathode that is into the collector so that we can measure by using this collector so which can be connected which is connected towards a galvanometer so this is a galvanometer so which can measure the number of electrons and if you change the position of this crystal if you change the position of this crystal then we can say the diffraction angle so it will be changed say for example if the electron beam is directed like this diffracted like this then we can move this the collector up to this position so we can move like this so we can move up to here so depending on the diffraction angle then we can change so we can measure the diffraction angle from this circular scale so we can measure the diffraction angle from circular scale and we can find the so that is the number of electrons entering into the collector by using this galvanometer so this is the construction so in this so we can move this collector we can move this collector over this circular scale at any position and so we can measure the only the fast moving electrons which are entering into the collector that can be measured by the, using this galvanometer and for different angles for different angles so here you can see that how the electron will be changing its angle that is we are taking the potential difference so for 45 volts then how the electron beam will be diffracting so here you can measure the this diffraction and if you increase the this voltage between the cathode and anode then we can observe that so there is an increase in the diffraction angle so for different observations we are up, that is observations are repeated for the different potential differences between the cathode and anode and it is observed that a bump begins to appear in the curve that is 44 volts so it will be starting at here when the voltage is 44 and it is becoming maximum that is with increasing potential bulk will be moving towards that is it will be moving upwards and it will be reaching towards the maximum bulk will be there for an old days the potential difference the 54 volts and the angle diffraction angle will be theta equal to 50 degrees and based on these values based on these values that is we are calculating the how the wave length will be existing based on the equation de broglie equation we know what is the de broglie equation it is lambda equal to 12.26 by under root v we know here we have applied the v equal to that is potential difference is a potential difference v equal to that is 54 volts we are applying for this 54 volts we can observe that the maximum diffraction angle will be there or we can say it is called maximum dump bump will be appear and we are substituting this value 54 in this equation and we are getting the lambda value so which is equal to is 1.67 angstroms so this is one of the equation that we are taking based on the de broglie equation now we are considering the another equation and analyzing the x rays so here we are taking the crystal so in this crystal so this is the 
planes that we are acquiring for each and every uh, crystal that we have taken as a target and as the, the electron beam is incident so it will be diffracted so this diffraction angle that we can observe here the 50 degrees that is the maximum dump and here we can calculate the so diffraction angle this is 25 degrees and this is 25 degrees and now we are taking an equation that is Bragg's equation so which is equivalent to 2d sin theta equivalent to n lab so in this equation so we know the d value d is set to be called it is interplanar distance so we are seeing here the planes in the target crystal and this d is indicating the interplanar distance so for a given crystal here we are considering the nickel crystal as a target and for this given crystal the d the interplanar distance it is equivalent to the 0.91 angstroms so we are substituting the d value here and sin theta we are substituting we can substitute this theta value so where the theta equivalent to 50 degrees and here n is said to be called diffract that is order of diffraction so we are taking the t value that is n value equivalent to 1 and we are substituting all these values the d value sin theta value and n value and in this de Broglie equation after substituting so we are getting the lambda equivalent to 1.65 angstroms so this is the value that we are getting the wave equation the wavelength for this the electron beam so here we are taking the electron beam the electron beam is emitting from this cathode and which is equivalent to 1.65 angstroms and previously we have calculated based on the de Broglie equation so here you can see that from the de Broglie equation we have got the lambda equivalent to 1.67 angstroms and based on the de Broglie equation so we have got lambda equivalent to 1.65 angstroms from these two equations we can say that the value lambda value is they are approximately same and this is the good agreement or we can say the wavelength is computed with the de Broglie hypothesis hence the confirmation that the de Broglie concept of matter is. so from this Davison and Germer experiment so we can conclude that de Broglie concept of matter is. so this is the end of today's class and the remaining will be continued for the, the next case. Like, share and subscribe. Hit the bell icon for more updates.